In this question, we are looking for trunk links. So I have a VLAN topology for you. And in this VLAN topology, we have three routers, three switches, and three PCs. And each of these PCs are in different VLAN. Can you see the trunk links? As you know, in a VLAN topology, the ports towards the end users are all access ports. So we eliminate 8, 9, and 10. We cannot define any trunk links between any routers. Here, the links between the routers are not trunk links also. So we eliminate 1, 2, and 3. And the remaining ones are our answers. The links between the switches and the links between switch and the routers. Our answer is C. If you don't take into account native VLAN, you will not solve this question. So here we have two switches and there are some configuration on these switches. And we have also additional VLAN, VLAN 5. How can we provide server to PC connectivity? On the access ports, there is a VLAN 5 configuration and there is also a trunk configuration on trunk ports. But I think something is missing. Let's see which one is missing here. As you know, on trunk ports, only native VLAN is allowed. By default, native VLAN is 1. So on the trunk port, only VLAN 1 is allowed normally. What we need to do? We need to allow VLAN 5 on trunk links. After that configuration, PC to server connectivity will be established. So our answer is D. How many collision domains are there in this topology? Here we have one router, one hub, and one switch. We are asking that the number of collision domains in this topology. So let's remember what is collision domain firstly. A collision domain is a domain, is a media, in which at a time only one device is allowed to transfer data. If one more device tries to transfer that data at a time, a collision occurs. Each interface of a router is one collision domain. It is also true for switch. Each port, each interface of a switch is a single collision domain. What about hubs? A hub, a wall hub is only one collision domain. According to this information, let's count down our collision domains. Here, the wall hub is one collision domain. And each interface of a router is one collision domain. So here we have two collision domains. And what about the switch? And switch has five ports here and each switch port is one collision domain. So totally we have one, two, three, four, five and six collision domains. Which letter is OSPF intra area routes? In a routing table, there are letters in the beginning of the routes. So these letters shows us the origin of the route. In this question, we are asking that which letter shows OSPF intra area routes. What do you think? The last three answers are external routes for OSPF and the second answer is for entire area OSPF. For this question, our answer is A. A is the intra area OSPF route letter. By the way, what is intra area and inter area routes in OSPF network? If a route is inside an area in an OSPF area, then it is intra area route. And if a route is between different areas, then this is inter area route. Which IP version 6 multicast address match is wrong? So there are five choices and one of them is wrong and we are asking this choice. Let's go through the choices. FF02 colon colon 6 OSPF version 3 DRs. FF02 colon colon C DSCP servers. FF02 colon colon B ERGRP. FF02 colon colon 9 RIPNG router. FF02 colon colon 2 all routers. What is your answer? For this question, our answer is C. For IP version 6 ERGRP, we use FF02 colon colon a as a multicast address. Let's remember the IP version 4 multicast address of EIGRP. What was it? It was 224.0.0 and 10. Which one is elected as OSPF best path according to the given cost values? Here are three choices and one of them will be elected as best path by OSPF. For the first path, we have cost 10 plus 50, so we have 60 costs. At the second path, we have 15 and 35, and this time we have 50 costs. At the third path, we have 10, 20, and 5. As a total cost, we have 35. As you can see on the topology, 
the lowest cost is at way 3. So our answer will be way 3. In the first and second phase, the router will pass two routers. But at the third way, it will pass three routers. At the third way, although passing more routers, it will elect it as best path because of the lowest total cost. So our answer will be C. Which OSPF command will give the below output? So here we are asking an important OSPF command. What do you think? What is the correct answer for you? Here are the answers. Show IP OSPF database, show IP OSPF interface, show IP OSPF peers, show IP OSPF neighbor, show IP OSPF statistics. What is your answer? As you can see, with this OSPF command, we list our OSPF neighbors, their states, IP addresses, interfaces, etc. And this is an important OSPF command for us. Our answer is show IP OSPF neighbor. What is the range of this administrative distance? Administrative distance or preference values are very important to select a best route. So, there are different administrative distance. For example, when I ask you what is the administrative distance or preference value of OSPF, you will answer me it is 110. Or if I ask you what is the administrative distance of external BGP, you will answer me it is 20 for Cisco. The answer of this question is C. So, administrative distance values can be any value from 0 to 255. In an OSPF topology, which OSPF packets or methods are used to request new LSAs? So, here on the screen, there are five types of OSPF packets. One of them is used to request new LSA types. Which one? The first one, database description packets are used to synchronize the databases between routers. The second one, link state update messages are used to send the update message to requested LSAs. These are the response of LSA requests. The fourth one, LSACT, is the answer of the received of packet for any other packets. The last one, the hellos, are used to establish OSPF neighborships. For this question, our answer is LSR link state requests, C. What is the third floor's usable IP range? Our IP address is 200.10.15.0/24, and we have seven floors. In each floor, we will use a different subnet. So let's focus on the question and learn how to find the IP range of these floors. Here, firstly, I'm writing the IP address and subnet mask here, and I will write the last octet of subnet mask in binary format. And as you can see, all zeros. And the first three octets of the subnet masks are network paths. So we have seven floors. And to cover all these seven floors, we need to the power of x must be bigger than seven. So we find three. And here we add three to our subnet mask, seed value. And we find the new seed value, 27. And the other parts are host parts here, two to the power of five is equal to 32 and our increment is 32. I'm writing the first network number here and the second one and then the third one and then I'll write the fourth one. The first IP address of the third range is the network address and the last one is the broadcast address. So here our IP range is 200.10.15.65 hyphen 24 slash 27.